We take you now to Berlin. Four enemy warplanes. The further warplane of the enemy was shot down by anti-aircraft artillery. Three German planes are missing. German bombers successfully attacked Polish naval forces in Skatoflo last night. Several capital ships were hit. The official Norwegian Telegram Bureau published a declaration yesterday which has been issued by the Norwegian government in conjunction with the Foreign Affairs Committee. The declaration reads as follows. This morning, the British and French governments ordered mines to be laid in Norwegian territorial waters with the object of stopping all shipping within Norwegian waters. And British warships are keeping guard in these areas. The Norwegian government are most solemnly protesting against these, this open breach of international law and this awful violation of Norwegian neutrality and sovereignty. Norway has, in the course of this war, observed all rules of neutrality with great care and precision. It has been full accordance with these generally recognized rules that Norway had kept open her waters to the legitimate shipping of the belligerents. If now the British and French governments had adopted measures which are to stop all exports to Germany, but the Norwegian government draws attention to the fact that on the 11th of March 1940, the British and the Norwegian governments signed an agreement in which the British government agreed to the condition that Norwegian goods may be shipped from Norway to Germany. The Norwegian government had therefore little reason to assume that the Americans would adopt arbitrary measures in order to stop these exports. The Norwegian government can on no account tolerate that the belligerents lay mines in Norwegian territorial waters. The government must demand that these mines be removed immediately and that the foreign warships be withdrawn from their power. The Norwegian government must reserve the right to take any steps that might be justified by such a violation of neutrality. It appears that England is now beginning to turn her threats against the Scandinavian countries into activity. In a special announcement at three minutes past eight on Monday morning, Norwegian time, the Norwegian radio repeated a report of the BBC in which it was said that London and Paris have now determined to lay out of mines at three different places in Norwegian territorial waters. This announcement had produced an almost panic-stricken reaction in some quarters since it is feared that this action of the Allies will in the very shortest time involve Norway in the war also. Special bulletins, extra editions of the morning papers and leaflets have done their part to test the seriousness of the hour by spreading the significant news. In well-informed political circles, closely connected with the Foreign Office, it is understood that quite apart from the laying of the mines as such, General indignation for worlds regarding the manner in which England and France chose to inform the Norwegian government of this latest step. The Norwegian government received an official note shortly before the news report of the London station, in which they were informed of this anglo French measure. The note closes as follows. For these reasons, the government of the Allied powers have given orders to begin with the laying of the mines. This announcement of the BBC was the first authentic news which the Norwegian public heard concerning the new development. The Norwegian minister in London was immediately ordered by the Norwegian foreign minister, Professor Poe, to call on Lord Halifax. It was said in Oslo that this was not to be in protest, since the Anglo-French step could not be counted by a mere protest. Apart from this, Foreign Minister Code invited the visit of the English minister in Oslo during the course of Monday morning. This is Berlin calling with the first news service for South and East Asia and Australia. Western powers open attack on neutrals. Crime, the last resource of allies. Now the headlines of the German press in discussing the laying of mines in Norwegian territorial waters. The news of this worst violation of Norwegian neutrality and sovereignty and the British Secret Service's attempted sabotage of the Danube were the main features of the German evening papers yesterday. Mr. Churchill lives up to his occupation as a desperate adventurer 
The occupation will be won even before the World War in both domestic and foreign politics. And one question particularly laid by the part he played in the Antwerp, Saloniki, and Gallipoli adventures was the Deutsche Allgemeine Zeitung of Berlin. These last resorts are the best labor are believed in England to be the only way out of a bad fellow in which Great Britain finds herself in the present world. And this is what is being described as the British Spring Offensive of 1940, the Berlin paper, Deutsche Allgemeine Zeitung, concludes. The Western powers see no other child of continuing their war than the brutal oppression of the neutrals of Europe and the flagrant violation of their rights, so as the Hamburg of Brandenburg. The total economic warfare which the Allies have declared on Germany has been combined for the declaration of war on all neutral states of the European continent, the paper continues. Lack of courage and inability have forced the Western powers to evade the military consequences of the war they waged against Germany. Not even now, at the beginning of the eighth month of war, can they muster up enough courage to challenge Germany in an open and honest battle. It is their weakness which has forced them to resort to such methods of privacy as the act of sabotage in the brand new, and their mind laying in Norwegian territorial waters is just another phase of their policy begun during the russo finnish conflict, which has always aimed at dragging Norway and Sweden into the war and at making them fight for their selfish interests. The Hamburg of Sendenblad continues. The Western powers act as if Norwegian territorial waters were not natural territory at all, but territory belonging to Great Britain and France. From Germany, it remains to be seen in what power the neutrals were subject to such violations of their neutrality, the total of complete. Under the heading, British military operations in Balkans prevented, the Berlin newspaper UNGRIP deals with the attempted act of sabotage of the British Secret Service in the Danube. The whole world takes note of the insecurity and desperation in which Germany's enemies find themselves and which forces them to resort to criminal activities as is demonstrated by the high-handed violation of the rights of the neutrals. In her blind statement of Germany, Great Britain is prepared to sacrifice all the neutrals of the European continent and to lay their countries in ruins to suit her evil and imperialistic aims, the paper under concludes. This is Berlin calling for the first news service for South and East Asia, Australia. Great surprise and painful tension prevailed last night in Oslo, the Norwegian capital. The city groups of people were gathered excitedly discussing what had occurred. In their X-ray edition, the newspapers printed the text of the news published in Paris, as well as maps of the three English minefields near Orlesund, Kostiansund, and the entrance to Narvik. Dark Blooded headlined its X-ray edition. Tonight, the Western Powers are closing Norwegian territorial waters by three minefields and controlling this territory with their warships. The newspaper remarked that this was an unexpected and sudden act of force which had come as a complete surprise to the Norwegian government. Yesterday morning, at six o'clock, the ministers of England and France presented themselves at the foreign ministry and delivered their notes which announced the laying of the mine. The secretary on duty at the foreign ministry received the notes and sent one to the foreign minister, Professor Coates. The discussions that ensued between the government and the Committee for Foreign Affairs in the Norwegian story were to determine what form Norway's protest was to take against the Anglo-French violation. The Federal Duck Club, it says, that the minefields are being guarded by strong British forces and it would therefore be impracticable for Norway to try to remove the mines by force. One had not informed the Norwegian authorities beforehand of what had now been done. In other words, it was a clear coup. In Norwegian political circles, this sentence in the Anglo-French mode, the Allies were at first never followed the example of Germany in the use of brute force, is felt to be a sarcastic insult.
We've just rebroadcast the official news as given out by the German government radio. This news does not contain any verification of the invasion of Denmark or the declaration of war by Norway on the Nazis. Now for more bulletins from the Associated Press. London. The Danish legation confronted with reports that Germany had invaded Denmark said early today that we have no news except press reports from America. We are waiting for confirmation. New York. The British Broadcasting Corporation early today declared that reports of a state of war between Norway and Germany are so far unconfirmed and must be treated with reserve. Keep tuned to this station for further bulletins on the war situation.